He was regarded as the world's most powerful and until now most elusive drug lord, but the decade-long manhunt for Joaquin Guzman is now over. The head of the notorious Sinaloa cartel, arrested in a seafront hotel by Mexican and American authorities, and now facing a catalogue of charges. This arrest is the product of an operation that's been worked on for several months in coordination with all federal government agencies, and they've worked on it in a very important way. The arrest was impeccably achieved. Since he escaped from prison in a laundry van in 2001, Guzman has turned himself from a middling cartel official into a figure listed by Forbes magazine as one of the world's most powerful people, with a fortune estimated at a billion dollars. As his power grew, so did the brutality and ruthlessness of the cartel wars. More than 70,000 people killed in horrific and often very public ways, bringing the terror they were intended to. Guzman's organization takes the name of his home state of Sinaloa, and although it is now a transnational cartel, operations are still based there. Guzman's current arch rivals are Los Zetas, who are based all over the country and into neighboring ones too, but originated in the Gulf of Mexico region. But most cartels, and especially Guzman's Sinaloa gang, have a cross-border presence, sending drugs in high volume into the U.S. and beyond. No wonder Washington put such a bounty on his head. The U.S.-Mexico border region became that battleground, and it was always said that Guzman managed to avoid capture with the aid of protection from ordinary villagers and some of Mexico's most powerful. But his arrest follows that of several top Sinaloa operatives in recent weeks. His capture is undoubtedly a major victory for those fighting the cartels, but no one expects this to stop the flow of drugs or blood. As Guzman's cartel partner has warned, when one leader is killed or jailed, the replacements are ready. Greg Milam, Sky News, Los Angeles.